All right, this is the next one on uh, how to use principle of virtual work uh, to solve a simple cantilever beam. Uh, looks quite unassuming, but we showed from last video that yeah, you can actually do that by assuming a dispersion function. Last time we did it, uh, we did uh, uh, this one equals to like, uh, you know, um, a x third plus b x second. Yeah, I, I think I used c and d in the last video, but yeah, you got the idea. I mean, so basically, we we cheated a little bit, you know. We 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 said it has the third order term and the second order term. Um, we actually don't need to cheat to say there's the no first order term and there's no constant simply because of the boundary condition. So, if you want to go with polynomial, which is a you know, natural choice, once you get rid of those two terms, yeah, you're going to naturally go into those two. Then some students are going to say, hey, hey why don't you just do this? Uh, you know, it's probably more, sort of s s more complicated than that. But then they're like, okay, what? Well, like you cheated. You know there's a third order term, you know there's a second order term from the back of the book of mechanics materials. So how about you don't know that? Would the principle of virtual work still work? So how about today we're gonna do the example of uh, we don't know that we're just gonna go with AX uh, yeah we're, we're, we're kind of a little bit you know insecure or we'll say oh you know what I don't know if uh, you know third third order gonna cut it. We're gonna actually do um, fourth order, just in case you got something going on. You know, basically what what it what it does is that uh, we're saying after you apply p, uh, if this is your positive y, this is your x, and this is apparently x equals zero and all that type of stuff. Then this curve, what uh, this uh, um, you know, v x is a combination of three terms, there are fourth order, third order, and second order. Okay, so if you review my um, notes uh, from last time, uh, the, the virtual displacement, which we will need to do this, um, is, uh, you know, naturally, yeah, in fact, you can do anything, but naturally, you, you just do the same format, but in this virtual thing, you're gonna go with uh, um, there are one x fourth plus uh, there are two x third plus there are three x uh, second. Um, yeah, so those there are one to three. They are arbitrary numbers that can be anything. Then the ABC is the unknown of the real displacement we're gonna actually trying to solve. Okay, so the the beauty of principal virtual work is that. Once you set this up, everything is uh, um, everything is pretty sim simple. You just need to write out the uh, ex external virtual work. Uh, in this case, it would be quite simple because your external work, um, external force is p. Then it's going down this delta, which is when you plug in x equals to l. Then you do it. So it's a uh, very simple. Um, but it's P working on the virtual displacement at the tip. So it's L fourth of delta one plus P L third of delta two plus P L second of delta three. Okay, got it. Then uh, you just need to write out the uh, internal virtual work um, for a beam, and we again assume it's a Euler Bernoulli beam, so it's a uh, uh, <coughs> uh, EI of uh, um, from 0 to L. Um, you take a second derivative of the real displacement function, and then times so you're taking the second derivative of the virtual discipline function here dx okay that's that's pretty straightforward so let's uh, let's do it um, yeah 
this can you know if I write it out it'll, it'll be long I'm a, yeah I'm not gonna you know sugarcoat it or anything L and then you take the differentiation of those two two, two times four you can come out and come out so it's 12 okay 12 a x second okay and then plus uh, this guy come out twice so 6 b x uh, plus um, 2 c and then times uh, the this guy you know kind of doing the same thing so yeah you got 12 uh, delta 1 x square plus 6 delta 2 uh, x plus um, 2 delta 3 and then dx I mean yeah we're, we're doing derivation here but uh, this step I mean anybody can do this I mean don't tell me you can't do this if you can't do this uh, it's really not my fault okay it's uh, either you or your calculus teacher okay so now we will uh, integrate it uh, like I said uh, it is just a polynomial integral but you need to kind of do time this and then this became x to the fourth and then the mixture of things um, long story short um, if I you know like do everything uh, let me look at my notes oh boy I will have uh, those numbers um, so basically uh, we're gonna integrate it it became 144 over 5 and uh, x uh, to the fifth power and then times a and then times delta 1 okay then uh, plus 18 b x to the fourth uh, times delta 1 uh, yes because like this guy or times this guy you know delta 1 um, then plus 8 c x third delta 1 so those three we finished uh, those guy times this guy then now gonna do this those three times this guy then get our delta 2 terms um, plus oh and then you know where I'm going 18 a x force a delta 2 plus 12 b x third delta 2 then plus um, 6 c x square delta 2 I mean, yeah, yeah, you go ahead and do it yourself. I mean, this will be the answer, okay? Not like, you know, cheating with, uh, uh, with this calculation or anything, you're gonna see that. So finally, you, you do this guy, C, then, oh, no, you, you do it like this in the whole thing, then get this delta 3 term, which is 2, which will give you first 6, Oh, no, no, six, eight. Um, A, X, third, delta three. I mean, you just have to be careful. I mean, if you, if you, like, individual ones, it's easy to make a mistake on your derivation. Once you make a mistake, there's no turning back. You're going to get the wrong answer. But every single step is simple. But, yeah, just be very careful, okay? <clears throat> Plus, six, a b x squared delta 3 then finally plus 4 c x delta 3 then this need to be evaluated from 0 to l and uh, um, the um, the you put, if you put l, 0 in there's nothing here right like everything's 0 but then so basically it's, you put l in that's it um, then you you realize because uh, delta 1, delta 2, delta 3 can be anything and uh, uh, the external that we have has to be equals to this internal uh, yeah actually it's like this minus this has to become zero but anyway we just do that 
and and also the external has the delta one, delta two, and delta three terms. So this in front of delta three has to be equal to here when you plug L in. Okay. So you have three equations. If I want to write them, they'll be something like that. Then again, like EI, I don't really like to write EI all the time. I like to kind of put it in the other side of the equation. So I'm just going to do um, P uh, divided by uh, EI, then times um, L to the fourth, L to the third, L to the second. Uh, those are actually like those guys. Uh, then equals to, uh, it's a matrix. 1, 4, 4 over 5, L fifths, uh, 18 L fourths, 8 L third, then you got uh, uh, 18 L fourths, 12 L third, 6 L second, and finally 8 L third, uh, 6 L second, and 4 L. This thing times your A, B, and C, should there be equal? Then, yeah, you're like, oh, great, look at this. This is symmetric. The reason it is symmetric, uh, it is because we use the same format for the real displacement and the virtual displacement. It does not have to be this way. Later, we're going to do an example where like they are not the same, but um, but yeah, typically people do that, then you end up with a coefficient matrix that is symmetric, and then you're like, okay, well, we just need to solve it, right? So how, how do we do that? Um, you know, uh, if you think about all those as equations, it doesn't change anything. If I uh, multiply the same thing over the entire equation from the left side or right side, so the, the second row, let's uh, time that by L. The third row, let's time that by L square. Um, what do you find out is uh, you can rewrite this uh, as this. Um, you will be able to get everything into L to the fourth power on this side. Then on this side, you're going to get uh, L to the fifth, fifth, fifth here, four, 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 three, three, three. So you can simplify this by doing something like this. So you can take the L force out and EI, and then this just became one, one, and one. Then uh, you have uh, um, L to the fifth out, and then you can do a totally adjust numerical matrix. Um, and then you times uh, the uh, yeah this is a little tricky yeah it's not uh, immediately apparent but if you really just do our uh, shovel rule you find out uh, mm, this equation and this equation after you do did those two guys are exactly the same so you can solve for those by just inverting this matrix and do all that you'll find out that you will be able to solve for this um, you can yeah you guys can uh, go ahead and do that uh, what you will find out is a uh, b over l and c over l square those guys after you solving everything it is uh, yeah just you have to you know believe me um, so basically it's a, a P L E I and then times zero and negative point one six 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 yeah you know you got the idea and then point five uh, so you're like uh, okay what uh, is that What is that is uh, basically if you write it in like a common language, it's a equals to zero, okay, and b equals to negative 
Um, if you still haven't figured it out, it's six. Yeah, because point one six 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 whatever is one over six. Uh, then c is equals to uh, p l over two e i because point five. And if you plug that back right in your assumption, like right here, remember a is zero, b is uh, negative p six e i whatever. This, c is this. You find out uh, you have uh, the exact solution that we're looking for, which is vx equals to p l e i over two x minus square minus uh, p six e i x third, which is the exact uh, solution. What this tells you is, uh, if you don't know what you're doing, and you add uh, some more terms, but as long as you have the correct terms, then those extra terms, they're gonna vanish through principle virtual work. This is pretty amazing. Uh, so basically what I'm saying is that if the actual solution is uh, has a third term a second term and then you have those it doesn't matter what you added here you can add x to the fourth you can add x to the fifth sixth seventh um you can also add a, you know something funny like a times sine x you know whatever oh, given that you have to satisfy boundary condition once you do that you find out uh, gee man um those other things gonna go away you're only gonna get the correct terms so that's that's this one um, I think uh, um, your your, your dis displacement w choice will be actually quite uh, um, um, uh, quite critical for you this, this principle to work okay you, you have to you know have some educated guess on what the displacement function is like uh, on the next video, we're going to show you that, uh, um, yeah, someone said, oh, yeah, you, you have to do this. Uh, they are kind of similar. But I'm going to show you that I'm going to, uh, you know, keep a correct assumed real displacement. But the virtual displacement, I'm going to just do something like not the same. And then I'm going to show that it still works. Okay, so that's all for this one. We'll see you next time.